This video is brought to you by Sporlin. So we got a service call on a walk-in freezer. Well, actually, they said the service call was on the walk-in cooler, and they said there was a burning smell from one of the motors. I couldn't find a burning smell, so the walk-in freezer is inside the walk-in cooler through another door. I opened that up, and I could smell the burning smell. Uh, I noticed that uh, it's nice and cold inside the box, but the coil's not running. So I came up onto the roof, and the breaker's tripped. So we're not going to reset that breaker. Okay, we're going to turn it off. Whoops, I hate that freaking thing. We're going to turn it off, and we're going to go downstairs and uh, investigate for an electrical short. Here's my freezer coil, and it smells like an electrical burn in here really bad, especially when you open up the doors. So we've got power off, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and take these fan guards off and the fan blades off and investigate the wiring running through the bulkheads inside here. Very common place. There's a little bulkhead and there's like a little cord protect protector and wires a lot of times rub out on those. They also melt to heaters, so we're going to check that also. So I pulled out both blades, inspected all the electrical, and I can't find anything that's jumping out at me. So what I went ahead and did is put one of the fan blades back on, turn the unit on, it didn't trip the breaker, and I'm just watching it operate. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and disconnect the leads to this motor and go ahead and amp this motor out and then do the vice versa for this one over here. So I don't know if the camera can see it or not, but this motor over here is spinning a lot faster than this motor. This motor's barely going any. And it has 208 volts, so definitely got something going on with the motor. This is actually a couple days later. I went ahead and replaced both motors and uh, because I had the burning smell in both of them. So I changed them both and then I got to thinking what would cause both those motors to fail. And the only thing it could be, as long as it was getting proper voltage, was the limit switch, the fan delay. So I bypassed the fan delay and I'm actually back here today to go ahead and replace the fan delay and the defrost termination. Uh, when I work on walk-in freezers and I have to change limit switches, I usually change those two together. Okay, so it's usually a jumbled mess inside here. The limit switches are back here. The three wire defrost termination fan delay is on the top. And then the two wire heater safety is on the bottom there with the yellow and white. So what's happening with the heater safety is power from terminal three from the time clock runs through the heater safety so long as it's not too hot, it energizes the heaters. And as far as the defrost termination switch goes, it's just breaking common. So you've got common, let's see, up here on the red wire. And common is just running through the defrost termination fan delay. So if the coil gets too warm, the common gets sent up to the X terminal on the time clock and it terminates defrost. And if the coil gets cold enough, the common is sent to the other side of the evaporator fan motors. That one comes through right here on this black wire. So it's just basically a light switch. All right, so this, you know, they can't always be super easy, but this was an interesting one where we had a complaint of a burning smell and I ended up finding a breaker tripped. But once I reset the breaker, everything was working, okay? But you can't just reset it and walk away. Sometimes you got to investigate a little bit further, okay? Dug into it, found that the burning smell was actually coming from the evaporator fan motors. Um, went ahead and replaced both the fan motors. I didn't catch that part on film, but I replaced both the fan motors. And then after I did, I wanted to do a follow-up, and that's when I kind of decided, you know what, I'm going to change those limit switches too, because like I said in the video, I'm trying to think what would cause the motors to, to become a problem if they had the right voltage going to them. Potentially, it could be that um, defrost termination fan delay limit switch, okay? Um, most of the time, like I mentioned in the video, when I change limit switches, I change them as a set. So, you know, if it, if it has three limit switches in there, then I'm going to change all three. This one has a combination fan delay, defrost termination, and a heater safety, so I just swapped them out real quick. And on those heat craft coils and even the other brands, it's a very common thing for the limit switches to fail, especially with the newer ones. The older ones seem to last a lot longer, but, you know, it is what it is. So I uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and uh, we will uh, see you guys next time, okay?